Hey there, I know you're looking at the total running time of this video and thinking, oh my gosh, can I dedicate that much time? But think about how much time you scroll through Facebook or waste time on YouTube. This is gonna be worth your time. I've spent a lot of money and used up a lot of glass and a kiln firing to learn something myself and share it with you. So watch all the way to the end to see what this is all about. Hello everybody. All right, this is going to be one of those videos that you might want to bookmark and come back to often. Uh, I will anyway. Uh, this is a pure learning video. I'm not making a project. I'm learning and testing and trying some new products that uh, you might find interesting. So let me just dive into it. I am testing these medium pens, these embossing pens. Um, and this is a, a, a stamp pad that you may have seen others use before. Nancy Sala is the one that introduced me to this, and she's got a YouTube video on this. But I saw Tabitha about, I don't know, a week ago or so, post, uh, maybe a couple, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, she posted a video where she used one of these pens. And she used a pen to write on glass, and then she put some enamels on it and fired it. And I thought... What is that magic? And so clearly I've already opened this and used it. But um, I bought these on Amazon. I bought all these on Amazon. Uh, and they're all in my Amazon store. Um, this is a set of two. And it has two different tips. Well, this is probably going to show you better. A brush tip and a bullet tip. So I think this one's more rigid. And so I wanted to uh, try both of those again. Um, this one is the same. There's a brush tip and a bullet tip. This one says Distress, it says Embossing Pen, but it's by Ranger, it's the same company. And so I didn't know what was different about these, so I wanna try them out as well. Haven't even opened them yet. Uh, so we'll give them a, a try and see what happens with that one. Okay, so since I didn't know, I reached directly out to the manufacturer and they responded very quickly. They also had a set of pens called Letter It that seemed very similar. And so this is their response. Bottom line, looks like there's really not much difference between them. So I'd say if you're looking for them, go with what you can find and for the cheapest price. With that one, I also found on Amazon this one. Actually, let me remove this silly label that Amazon put on it. A WOW embossing pen. This one looks like kind of that bullet. You see that bullet tip. Um, and so I went ahead and just threw this in the cart to give it a, a try. So we'll see how this one does. And then um, just because I'm already doing this, I um, there's a, you might find different brands, but this Versamark is uh, really good for me. So Versamark, it's a uh, stamping pad that's basically clear. It's almost kind of gluey. It's the same principle as these pens, I believe. And then you can use a stamp and just apply um, stuff to it. So I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, try it with glass. I'm stumbling over my words this morning. I need more coffee. Okay, so... Um, what I have is I'm just going to do these on white glass and then um, some of the product I'm going to test needs to be um, covered or capped. So I'll cap with clear Tecta. Others do not or should not. And so I'll put the Tecta underneath. So let me show you what I'm going to use to test these. I will say, generally speaking, this is a video about these products. I'm testing these products. However, I'm going to use a bunch of different uh, powders in order to test them. And so that becomes a almost kind of second test. So uh, let me show you what I'm gonna be using. Okay, I have a whole array of powders here that I'm going to use today. And many of them are from Colors for Earth, which is Paula McCoy's company. I featured uh, some of her stuff before. I just, I have a lot, but I haven't tested enough or played with it enough. And so I will just give a caveat that if these don't work well with some of the Colors for Earth um, uh, components, that's not a reflection of Colors for Earth. It's probably more a reflection of these pens or what I'm doing because none of this uh, was really intended or sold to be used with pens like this. So is that clear? P Colors for Earth is amazing. Paula is amazing. Her products work very well when used as intended, and I am completely going off the reservation. But let me show you what I'm gonna use, or what I'm gonna do. I intend to do 16 different samples using these pens. So 
I don't think that they're going to turn out very well, but I thought let's use some red and some blue powder just to see how tr uh, opalescent powder does um, in a thin application. I don't think you're going to see much. I, again, I don't think it's going to go very well, but I wanted to try traditional glass powder while I'm doing this. Mica. So I have a couple of different mica options. This one's just a cheapie that you get at, home, at Hobby Lobby. Um, the blue is gorgeous. It's kind of this really cool pearlescent blue. It doesn't stay that way though. Um, it fires to be uh, kind of a, a light um, milky color. I don't know how to explain it. Um, so the blue fires out, but you still get a cool mica effect. I'm not gonna use white for this. I'll probably cut a, a little bit of black or something just to test um, perhaps all these micas I might test on black. So I've got uh, this one that you just pick up at any hobby store. Uh, I've got this that says brass mica. Um, I bought this used from somebody in a mix of other things. I have no idea what the manufacturer is, what the quality of that is, but it's worked pretty well for me before. So I thought that brassy color would be cool. And then this is one of the colors for earth uh, pieces I'll use today. This one's copper sparkle. Um, and so it's got this kind of beautiful coppery color. I intend to cap that. I'll put it on black and cap it and uh, see how that does. So again, though, I'm not necessarily using this for the exact intended purpose that uh, it was sold, but uh, I think it'll be fun. So I'm kind of putting it because it's copper and metallic, I'm putting it in this uh, kind of mica family here, even though that's not technically mica. Okay, next up, some enamels from Colors for Earth. These are the, um, uh, she's got a whole, what, 39, 40 colors or something. So I'm using just a couple of them uh, that I have on hand to try cerulean. And uh, what was this? Leaf green and then laurel green. So I just want to try them. Uh, these are her uh, glass enamels that uh, she has, uh, the, the G series uh, stuff. So anyway, you can go to her website and find out more about it. She also makes bubble powders. And so I wanted to try those. So uh, I've got a laurel green and a pink, so I want to see how those work. Um, speaking of bubbles, I'll go out of order here. I'll move these. Uh, copper carbonate, I've done videos on this before. Huge fan of copper carbonate, so I thought I might add that into the mix. And then you may have heard of people using uh, baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, uh, and so I've got a little of this from the kitchen and I'll use this as well. Uh, this creates a ton of bubbles, and so um, and I gotta think about it, I probably won't test this on white. I might test that on a different color as well. Okay, designers. So these are pure color pigment. It's not even technically enamel, it's pure color pigment from Colors for Earth. And so I got a red and a blue. It would be nice to kind of compare to the bullseye there. And then, which I know these are gonna be stronger. I know right off the bat, these are gonna look better. And then finally, um, some silkscreen uh, powders. So uh, Colors for Earth, silkscreen black and silkscreen white. Again, these are not, intended to be used as dry powder. They're intended to be mixed with a medium and applied through a silk screen. But, uh, you know, this is, <laughs> this is Jameson you're talking to. I'm gonna take things outside the boundaries all the time. So the next step for me, which is boring, is to cut up all my glass and get that all ready and clean. And then I'll come back and start to apply these and I'll show you what that looks like as I go. Okay, I finally have all my glass cut and cleaned, and so I'm ready to start building. And in order to keep myself sane, I've made a cheat sheet here so uh, that I can take my notes on. So what I've got, and I added a, a 17th, by the way, uh, at the end, I was like, oh, let, I wanna see how the designer, the DZs, how the white uh, performs specifically. So I'm gonna do white on black. So I've added, now I have 17 samples going in. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the pen and in a, these are six inch strips by one inch. And so in each basically one inch square, I'm gonna mark it with the pen. And I am going to do um, the same consistent mark all the way across, so or on all of these, so that I can compare apples to apples. So the white bullet, the white pen with the bullet tip is going to be the hearts. The white pen with the brush tip is the star, and so on and so forth. I did my initials here with the wow pen, 
uh, and then uh, the stamp, uh, which is the Versamark stamp at the, at the end. So I'm going to keep this handy as my cheat sheet. I wrote on here, what is the powder that I'm using? Uh, is it white? Is it capped? Is it black? Uncapped? All that stuff, all the way down. And uh, only I can read my chicken scratch, I'm sure. <laughs> But uh, this is going to kind of keep me straight. So I'm going to put this in front of me here as I start to, to work. Other notes. I'm going to work on just a plain sheet of white paper. Uh, and so that I can then pick up that paper and reclaim any of the powder back into my jars. I'm going to use a paintbrush in most cases to kind of apply it on there and then brush it off. Uh, I've got a can of air spray just to kind of clean it out every time so that I don't cross-contaminate too much. And for this entire video, I'll be wearing my mask because these are all powders and all uh, nothing I want in my lungs. So I'm going to basically get started and then um, I'm going to take them one by one to the kiln so that I can arrange them in order so that I know uh, exactly what fired and how. Uh, so. I'm going to, I'm going to film maybe the first one here and give show you exactly what my technique was. And then uh, from there, I'm not going to film all of it because that would be a very long, lengthy and boring video. So let's start with the first one, which is the red powder. I am not wearing my mask. So hang on, I'm going to go get my mask. Okay, so now let me get myself arranged here. I've got the hearts are going to be the white bullet tip. Stars are white brush tip. Open up this package. A little smiley face will be the black bullet tip. Uh, bullet. The little wavy art will be the brush tip. My signature will be the wow pen. And then the Versamark stamp will be the dog paw there. Okay, so now I am going to um, get started. So this was red powder on white uncapped. So I'm going to put my, um, you know, my, my tecta underneath that. And so for this one, I'm going to um, go ahead and see if I move this out of my way. Ah, making a mess. Okay, white. I'm going to use this side. This was just some scrap white that I have. I'm pretty sure that this was tecta but I don't know for certain. So, um, you know what, I am going, I know I'm gonna get the question, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Um, I'm going to, what I'm thinking is I'm gonna do these one by one so that it is wet. These are all wet as I apply my powders, but somebody's gonna say, can you let them dry first? <laughs> so let me go ahead and try that. I'm gonna do these pens on black on a black strip and um, no, as a matter of fact, I have extra white strips that I cut. Uh, I cut too many. So I'm gonna use one of these uh, white ones and a couple of them are too short. So since this is a test, I'm going to do that. Sorry for all the noise. Okay, so on this white scrap piece here, I'm gonna go ahead and do this now at the top of my video, uh, top of my uh, test and then um, I will let them let it dry while I do all the rest and then come back and test. Gosh, I can't talk today. Okay, so um, let's see. First one on the bullet pen is a heart. So you're not gonna be able to see this. I can barely see it. It's liquid on there, but kind of just barely. Then a star with the brush. Then the bullet, smiley face. Boy, this is kind of hard to see where I've even been. I need to come up with a different plan. Bullet smiley. <laughs> yeah, this is not gonna work. What might be better is to get something to kind of just track my, let's see here. So one, two, three, then this is going to be my little wave pattern. Then with the wow pen, I will do my initials. And then with the Versamark stamp pad, which this is just a stamp pad, you can buy refills for this, but basically you're kind of putting that, you're just using, oh gosh, I hit that with my head. Sorry to make it shake. You're just uh, using that to kind of load up your stamp and then 
applying your stamp, lifting up. Okay, I'm going to set this one aside to dry. Now, what I'm going to do next, just for my own sanity, is just mark out on my paper here, one inch marks, so that I know where I'm marking my pens. Okay, now I'm gonna do the real one for real this time. And we're gonna start with the white bullet as a heart, the white brush is the star, black bullet is smiley face, black brush is little waves, signature pen or wow pen is my signature initials and then whoops verse and mark guy here at the end okay so now that that's wet and i'm going to cover my verse and mark pad because i don't want to accidentally get like uh, and powder on it gosh i hit my camera again sorry guys okay so now that i've done that i'm going to put my mask on and get my powder out and for these for these glass powders i'm just going to use a little tea strainer Well, so that's one problem I can see right offhand is that I've got a bunch of schmutz on this. So it's kind of hard. Let me see. Wonder if I can brush this without disturbing my patterns and designs. I kind of, I, I, for powders, for these glass powder, frit powder in particular, I want to leave as much glass on there as possible because uh, I think already it's going to be very light. <laughs> Just did a quick puff of air and that helped a lot. Okay, so there you go. That is the first one. And for these red ones, red and blue powders, I want to do these uncapped, but I don't want them to shrink up. So I'm going to put a little layer of Tecta underneath and I'm going to walk this over to the kiln. So that's how I'm going to do all of these. So um, I will walk through those now and come back and show you the layup when it's in the kiln. Okay, I'm on the micas now, so I'm just stopping the video for a quick note about mica. This stuff gets everywhere. <laughs> it's just such a mess. And the paintbrush really wasn't cutting it as I was trying to get the extra mica off. So I bought a cheap um, powder makeup brush. Uh, ladies, don't tell the fellas. <laughs> but I bought this at Walmart, and um, it is great on getting extra mica off. So you see now how clean those designs are now. Again, this blue is not going to stay blue. Uh, but I didn't want a whole bunch of random mica all across the um, back there. And I've learned that this makeup brush is nice and soft uh, and does a really nice job of getting extra mica off. So just a quick tip for you. I'm going to keep on moving. Okay, here we are. I uh, have all 17 samples here in the kiln. I am going to take these to a full fuse. And I'm also gonna clean up the big mess I made over there. But um, I hope that that video was helpful um, in terms of how I applied these. Some of them went on a little easier than others. Some were a little messier than others. Um, some of these, as I mentioned, are capped and some are uncapped. Uh, so we'll just see how they all come out. Again, I'm testing really the pens, not the enamels or the powders. 
Uh, but Paula, if you're watching this, those designers really went on nice. Um, so we'll see how they come out. Um, you might ask, how come you didn't test other enamels? Because I don't have any other enamels in my studio. So um, you're welcome to run your own tests and would love to see what you come up with. But um, this is what I happen to have. So I'm not selling anything. This is just what I have. And uh, I used what I had on hand. So, okay, let's fire these at a full fuse and see what they look like when they come out. Geez, I almost forgot. Uh, this is the one that I created and then let dry. This has been sitting for, gosh, I've been out here for at least an hour, probably closer to 90 minutes, to be honest. And so um, I need to brush something on here to see um, if it sticks. I'm gonna use this blue mica because one, it's cheap, uh, and two, um, it's super fine and super sticky. So that'll probably be a good test um, for us. And I'm doing this without a mask because I've already put my mask away, which is not good. So I'll just try not to breathe. This mica does get everywhere. So it appears that this is sticking. Now this is the mica. Of course, I didn't run this test with all of them, but it appears that the color is pretty good and that the, <clears throat> the sticky factor is for real. God, I'm gonna have blue. I'm gonna have blue all over my studio. I do this for you, YouTube. I do this for you. All right, so without doing too much more cleaning, looks like even quote unquote dry, you know what, it's probably still very wet, but I just mean after an hour and a half. So what this means is I could have done all my samples a little bit differently. Uh, but that's okay. Hope, hopefully this shows you that, uh, yes, indeed, this can work. So, all right, I, uh, off to um, finish cleaning up. Okay, they are fired, and here's the full lineup. So um, <laughs> they don't all fit on my paper. So I'm going to hold these up one by one and um, kind of share with you my observations. So I'm going to start with the one that you can't see but um, bring it up here. This is the red powder. Uh, this shows up more than I thought. So I left this uncapped, just for the record, uh, red powder on, on white glass, uh, all bullseye. And so um, I'm pretty, pretty pleased with how this turned out. And I, what's interesting is that it's relatively consistent across all the pens. Of all of them, I would say this WOW pen looks a little sketchy but honestly that could be the texture of the glass too so this was a bullet style pen not brush and so you know uh, bullseye glass has a little texture to it and so maybe it kind of skipped a little bit this was also my very first one i did so um i'm not judging the pen based on this but um the white bullet the white brush the black bullet the black brush the wow pen and the stamp i think you know fairly consistent results all the way across so that was on the red powder. Similarly, I was impressed with how much you could see from the blue powder that came through. Now this is clearly a dark blue that did not get that dark because it was such a light layer. I mean, you saw, I blew all the extra dust off of these. And so this is the bare minimum in terms of powder that stuck to the medium, but I'm still pretty impressed. So if you're looking for something that's a very light shade like this, uh, it could be a, a cool option for you. I hope you're seeing these well. I think uh, nothing ever translates into video as it does in person. So, um, you know, unfortunately, you might not get the full effect. But again, pretty consistent all the way across on the blue powder. On this one, this was the Pearl X. So you'll remember this is the blue um, mica that I bought at Hobby Lobby that I said the blue burns out. And uh, it's actually a little bit more bluey green than even I expected it to be. But you can see how it mostly just turns this kind of light color. Now this was capped. And so what you get here is this effect uh, when it's capped. But again, fairly consistent coverage all the way across. Maybe again, this wow pen was a little light, uh, which is kind of disappointing because I actually really liked this one and the way it wrote. But um, you know, maybe a little light. So is that me? Is that the pen? You know, I'm doing kind of quick strokes there. Um, so it's kind of hard to say, but this is what that uh, blue-green mica powder fires to on black, and it looks pretty nice. 
Next one is that unknown origin brass mica that I have, and this fires just as I've experienced it. It comes across really nice in the um, in the black. I think I keep being off camera this way. I need to focus this way, sorry. Again, pretty consistent across all of the pens, all the examples, maybe a little rough again in my signature. So um, what, what strikes me is that this WOW pen almost has a thinner line than even the others. So these are the bullet pens in the white and the black. And these, you know, that is just a straight stroke. Sometimes with the eyes, I did a little bit more of a dot, um, but you know, that's just a simple stroke and that looks thicker to me than this does. So yeah, just an interesting learning, but the application seems to have worked across all of them. Moving on, this is the Colors for Earth, um, that copper that I was telling you about. Now, this doesn't show up very well. What does show up, and you're not gonna be able to see this very well on camera, does look really impressive. So it is sparkly and there's some interesting color. It's just not bright and thick. That is not because of Colors for Earth, that's because of the way I applied it. Um, you know, I'm sure it is meant to be applied at a thicker level um, or layer, uh, mixed with a medium and brushed on, um, you know, mixed in with powders or something would probably get of a different effect. So don't judge this product based on my sample here, because again, I think I'm using this uh, somewhat out of scope for what it was intended. I definitely see the potential here though. I think this is really um, cool. I like the look of this copper, and, and I didn't mention this on the first video, I actually li liked the way this applied better. It was easier to manage or handle than the other micas. It wasn't quite as powdery and blow away. So if I were to do this again and wanna do this exact same thing again, I think what I might try is two layers. I might do um, a layer with the pen and put a layer of that on and then come back later, perhaps if it's dried a little bit and do a second application, that might work. I'm making my glass greasy. Um, but I like the product and I'm gonna continue to use it and play with it. Okay, this is the Cerulean, Cerulean um, uh, Colors for Earth uh, G Series enamels and um, very nice, very nice. Now this was fired uncapped, so, the, so this is on the surface. It's got a nice glossy appearance. Uh, I like this light color. Again, this is probably not being applied in the way in, in the spirit in which the product was designed, but I'm still very pleased with the way this turned out. So I think this is quite nice. When you compare it to the blue powder, obviously different colors, but this one has a little bit stronger concentration of color, uh, which I like. So that's a good, good effect there. Um, this next one is the same enamels, but this time capped. So I just wanted to see how they performed capped versus uncapped. I got some bubbles in here, um, but the, that looks quite nice. I think I might've put this glass upside down and trapped some bubbles unintentionally. Anyway, um, this looks really nice as well. So nice color, again, very, very thin application. And for what I got out of it, it turned out quite well. The initials are probably, again, that WOW pen, uh, probably the lightest here compared to uh, these other bullet pens. I don't dislike this, it's just different. I'm just calling it out as different. And then this was the, the last of the enamels, and this is the laurel green. So this was uh, leaf green, this was laurel green. This one I did uncapped. So I just wanted to see kind of how, obviously they were different greens, but I wanted to see kind of how these um, CFE enamels played under a clear cap of Tecta and on top of the glass and um, both of them are quite nice. So this is a very nice, my glass was weird. I got this, if I had cut this piece of glass for a piece of actual art, I probably would have skipped it because it had some weird um, variation in it and, I, and that kind of came through in the firing. But again, the color is decent and whether it was capped on top or underneath, um, it, looks, it looks quite nice. Okay, this next one is bubble powder. So this was the um, laurel green, <clears throat> excuse me, butter powder, <laughs> butter. <laughs> bubble powder from Colors for Earth. Again, it's it's pretty light and I um, it's hard to discern much uh, on camera or in person to be honest, but that's because I'm using the bubble powder kind of out of, uh, out of scope for how it was designed. Um, it was designed to be used with a medium and kind of painted on, or if dusted as a powder, relatively heavy application. And in this case, I did super light. Again, as you saw, like, you know, micron kind of layer. And so um, it, 
you know, nothing blew up, but, you know, there's nothing tragic here. It's just it didn't really give the effect uh, that I think the product was intended for. So if I want to understand these bubble powders more, maybe it would be helpful to follow directions and actually use them for the directions. Same here. This was the other bubble powder that's in pink. Um, very light, very faint here, very hard to tell. Not a reflection of the powder itself, uh, but more of a, a reflection of what I was trying to accomplish with it. And so uh, I just need to play with these more and actually follow uh, Paula's directions on the package. Okay, and this is the um, uh, copper carbonate. Love this stuff. It's so cool. Uh, again, I don't know that this fully comes across on camera like it does in person, but it's got this beautiful kind of turquoise, deep water kind of color to it. Nice bubble application. Um, as you, again, same very, very thin layer of this stuff, and it just bubbles. It bubbles very nicely. And in this case, they're very small bubbles. They're kind of almost what I would call micro bubbles. So, um, you know, different look than if you were, if you were to just dust powder over this and then cap it, a very light layer of powder, you get many more bubbles and a lot more bubble formation. This was a very, very thin application of minimal product. You still get bubbles, but it just looks different. Cool, cool stuff. This was the baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. It's a big hot mess. <laughs> you really can't, you can hardly see the images at all, which is fine because baking powder is white and I really didn't expect it to fire that way. But even the bubbles, I know that they're trying to take on the, the design. There's a heart here, star. But if you were just walking up to this and didn't know what I was trying to do, you'd have no clue what it was. But you saw how little amount of product there was, and there are a fair amount of bubbles. I mean, compared to the copper carbonate, arg arguably there was the same amount of product on both of these, same amount of uh, powder on both, and the copper carbonate behaved, and the um, sodium bicarbonate, the baking soda, uh, did not. So if you're one that plays successfully with baking soda, um, that's awesome. If you were just doing a dusting of the application, not trying to follow a certain pattern and firing it, you might get some really cool bubbles in there if you are intentionally trying to place bubbles. But even this one's pretty large. And so I would imagine uh, baking soda can get out of control on you real fast. All right, now we're looking at the designers. These are gorgeous. Um, Paula McCoy, well done. So uh, these designers, this was uh, capped with clear and this is that red and boy, is it red. Um, it went on lighter, it fired to this dark red. Um, beautiful. Now it's not fully um, filling in the paw, but, but that's because of the stamp. Again, this bullseye glass kind of has some texture to it. And so that's not a reflection of the product. It's a reflection of the stamp, not kind of, you know, making equal contact across the glass, but really, really nice um, color effect on this. So those pens in combination with these designers, I think is a win because here's the blue. And so again, really nice color, really nice saturation. Um, you know, quite, quite pleased with these. So that blue is, is beautiful, you know, color as well. And again, these are capped. These designers have to be capped uh, because it's pure pigment color. And if it's not capped, it'll just wipe right off. This is the black screen, silk screen powder that again, I'm using completely out of character with its intended purpose, but boy, do I love it. Uh, Paula, that worked out, you know, quite well. So if you're watching this video, um, you know, I, I know that that's <laughs> outside. It's like a, it's like um, an FDA um, commercial, you know, for drugs that, you know, do not use the product as, as not intended or not responsible for results when used as uh, not intended. Uh, but this is really pretty. So I'm really pleased with the silk screen powder in combination with these pens. This is uncapped. And so um, it fires a little matte. I probably need to take it a little bit hotter. I need to go back and read how or work on some additional samples if I want to see it fired to a gloss shine. But the color concentration is really strong. This is an example of the white powder. So this is the white silk screen um, and also un... un um, uncapped here, uh, quite nice. So again, kind of more of a matte finish, not necessarily the glossy finish, uh, but I do uh, like the look of the white on that black. It was, uh, it's nice. Uh, there's some good pigment in that white because it really, I mean, the thinnest of layers against black, which you're already kind of fighting against that. And that's a pretty good concentration of colors. So I think that there's some more playing that I can do with the silk screen white on darker colors and see it pop even more, Good, good stuff. Okay, this is the um, kind of bogey that I threw in. This is the one, but it was the designer white, 
Now again, designers have to be capped, so this is capped, and the designer's white versus the silk screen, screen white is fairly consistent. The designer's is a little stronger um, than silk screen, but, but not too much so. So if you have one or the other, I think you could get similar effects with both. It's just the difference is this can be uncapped and this has to be capped. Uh, but again, that designer white in context with the uh, silk screen white, pretty pretty nice, decent results. And then finally, this was uh, this was the extra extra. Um, this was when I said I let it dry for 90 minutes and see if the application still works. It worked beautifully. Um, so I don't know if you'll be able to see that very well. Yeah, you can kind of see it. This is again that blue mica now uncapped. And this is that very pretty, you know, kind of creamy, milky look you get. The signature kind of gets lost. Um, I can see it if I tilt it at an angle, but really cool. Now I did this on white, which is probably the worst color to test this on, but it really gives a almost kind of a creamy vanilla, you know, French vanilla kind of look on top of the, the white, but it gives you a sense of what this looks like fired uncapped. Let me find the example here. The colors really are different actually. Um, capped versus uncapped. Um, you know, capped you get again much more of a green kind of blue feel. Uncapped you get that nice creamy vanilla. Both cool, just uh, different results. So I know this was a long video. Hopefully you made it all through all of it with me. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you're interested in those pens, those medium pens, you can Google them on, or you know, look for them on the Amazon. Uh, I'm sure hobby stores sell them as well. Uh, as I think you know by now, I'm not. This is not a hard sales push, but I do have my own Amazon store because people are asking so often about uh, my products. So I've put them all into a collection on Amazon. I'll drop that link if you want to take a look at things I've featured in the past in videos or jump right to these. Uh, but again, you can probably find these at a variety of hobby stores, maybe direct from the manufacturer online. Um, uh, you know, or just do an Amazon search. You don't have to use my link, but if you do, I always appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> colors for Earth, I'll, you know, it's coloresforearth.com if you're interested in some of Paula's products. Um, you know, good good stuff and good person and, and always fun as well. Again, not a hard sales push, but I'll go ahead and drop the uh, link below in case you're interested in that. So thank you very much. I hope you learned something. I know that I did. I'm going to keep these samples as references. I think it'll be really nice to have. I'm going to write on the back of them with something more permanent so that I can keep the collection of them. And I'm going to keep playing with those Colors for Earth um, enamels and, and the bubble powders in particular. I think that there's a lot of promise with those. Loving the pens. I think if I were to buy a package of them, Either the white ones or the black ones seem to be fairly equal across the board in terms of results. So maybe it's whichever one happens to be cheaper for you. And the Versamark stamp, I think, worked quite well um, as well. Thank you, everybody, for hanging in here with me. This might end up being the longest video I've ever filmed, but hopefully, again, it was valuable to you. You are valuable to me. Please subscribe to the channel, like, comment. Those things all help, uh, you know, from a YouTube algorithm standpoint. Love you all. Take care. Enjoy the community. Drop any comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Bye-bye.